Hello and welcome back everyone, I am the Otaku, and today I'm going to teach you how to not suck a Neen Nub. Wait, is it Neen or Nine? Whatever, let's just go with Neeny Weenie. Neeny Weenie is one of two new heroes introduced with the Outer Rim DLC. He is a defensive, calculating hero who provides strategic reinforcements and lethal precision to the team. As always, I'll be going over the essential information that you need to know, then stick around for the best strategies and techniques on how to weenie like a pro. Did I actually put that in the script? Whatever, moving on. To start things off, Nini Weenie has the same movement mechanics as an infantry soldier. Able to walk, sprint, jump, roll, aim, and shoot. Next, he has three special abilities and a passive trait. First, let's talk about his trait. Now, to be quite honest with you, there isn't a lot of information out there detailing exactly what it's called and what it does. As far as I know, it works just the same as Greedo's confidence meter, but in reality, this trait only affects one of Nini Weenie's abilities and does nothing for the character himself. Whereas Greedo's trait will actually increase his base pistol damage, boost the damage of precision shot, and change what explosive is outputted when you use grenades. So in my opinion, it's kind of confusing to consider them the same, or a trait at all, when it's just the mechanic of one ability and not tied into the character himself. To better explain, let's take a look at each ability. First is Proximity Mines. This will allow you to place a Proximity Mine on the ground, up to four of them at one given time. However, on large game modes this is substituted for an orbital strike that's on cooldown. There isn't really a whole lot to say about this just yet, you simply get one or the other, but I will talk about how to be the most effective with them later on. Next is his auto turret. This lets you place a regular auto turret on the ground, but its damage is upgraded by getting kills or doing damage to heroes. Eventually the turret can be upgraded to having explosive shot, but don't count on this happening very often, as there are very few situations in which enough players will go full retard into a turret. Then just like Greedo's confidence meter, this turret's meter will go back down very quickly anytime it is not actively doing damage or killing players. Also, it needs to be noted that if you place a new turret on the ground, then all power up is immediately lost and has to start over. Last is Nini Weenie's Pulse Cannon. This is pretty much exactly what you expect. It's a regular Pulse Cannon, but with a shorter cooldown time and much more minimalistic scope when aiming down sight. Then, of course, Nini Weenie does come equipped with a DH-17 Blaster Pistol. If you want more information on the DH-17, then check the description below for a link to my blaster review. So there you go. As you now know, there's pretty much no integration of this trait into anything but the auto turret. So much fun, yay. Now that we have covered the basics, let's talk strategy. Because trust me, you're going to need one. The first thing that you should know is that Nini Weenie is designed to be a defensive player, providing strategic support with the turret and long-range support with the pulse cannon while also setting traps with mines or taking out key targets with orbital strike. His DH-17 pistol is the same as the regular version and doesn't get upgraded with confidence meter like Greedo's DT-12 does. So it's going to provide you with very limited 1v1 firepower and should only be used when you have no other options. In fact, his close range capabilities and health are so bad that squaring up against any villain or multiple infantry in close quarters is pretty much a guaranteed death. To put it simply, Nini Weenie is not designed to fight toe to toe and is better suited at setting traps and providing support. So with that being said, tactical positioning of yourself, your turret, and your mines is very much needed to do well. For large game modes, your best bet is to position yourself like a sniper or sharpshooter would. That doesn't mean you need to sit back very far away from objectives or battles, it just means that you should not be making yourself available to the direct line of sight of every enemy in the game. Put yourself in a tactical position where your turret can easily catch people off guard, force enemies to abandon a specific location or route, or cover an objective. In other words, somewhere it can do the work for you. Then be sure to use your orbital strike as often as possible on objectives, ATSTs or ATATs, where they have the most effect. At no point in time should you ever be running head on into the battle and exposing yourself to open areas. You're going to live much longer and be much more useful to the team by staying alive and providing that support. This is especially true on games like Walker Assault where the turret can easily cover the objective while you use orbital strikes to take out the ATSTs and ATATs. In Heroes vs Villains, things start to get a little bit tricky. We don't have a whole lot of room to work with and there isn't the same kind of spawn safety as you would get on big game modes like Walker Assault where you can kind of sit back near your spawn and know that you're generally safe from sneak attacks. 
so to play effectively there are a few skills that you should work on. The first is reading the map. It's very important that you can look at your map and know just from a glance where the villains spawn from, where they are currently positioned, and where you can place your traps to do the most damage. This is done by simply playing the map on both sides of the team, remembering the spawn locations, commonly traveled paths, and understanding how the current flow of battle generally is going to play out. For each map, there's usually two common routes that a team will take. You should know what route is being taken and where you can go to counter that positioning. The idea is to place your turret somewhere that will do the most damage as they get into position or as they leave that position for whatever reason. The second skill is sniping. Like I said before, the DH-17 pistol that Nini Weenie carries doesn't upgrade with his confidence meter, and so it's hardly going to take down enemy villains with its base damage output. I can't tell you how many times I have died because I thought pushing up was a good idea and Vader was able to get just one lightsaber swing off, locking me into an eternity of stuns until eventual death. Instead, you need to be able to wield that rapid cooldown pulse cannon like it's your primary weapon and keep as much distance between you and the enemy as possible. Now I know this might be a little bit tough to understand what you're supposed to do, so I'm going to give you a good example. Say you're playing on the Sora sub refinery. This is a really difficult map as usually both teams pile into the caves and fight in this very closed off space. Your team will end up either pushing up or their team will push down. Either way, you don't want to be a part of that fight as it's just way too closed off and doesn't give you much opportunity to make use of yourself. Instead, taking a slightly different route on the right side will allow you to place your turret in a way that will attack them at one side and cut off one of their escape routes. At the same time, you can usually sneak in pulse cannon shots and study the flow of battle. Just be mindful of the force and your surroundings, as once the enemy knows your positioning, infantry or hero guards will likely make their way to your spot. So placing your minds in clever positions is going to help offset that risk and let you focus on what's in front of you. Now with that being said, what happens if you find yourself between a villain and a hard place? For whatever reason, they figure out your strategy and decide to chase you down by yourself instead of engaging your team on their regular path that they would normally take. Well, to be quite honest with you, there isn't a whole lot you can do. The winning strategy is to read the map and see where they are going. If you fail to pay attention to this and their villains get the jump on you, then you're doing it wrong. However, if just one or two villains sneaks up and tries to take you down, there is still a strategy. Against Vader, you're pretty much dead and there's nothing else to it. Just try to do as much damage as possible and may the force be with you. If the enemy is Boba, Palpatine, or Greedo, then you have a chance. Essentially, you need to run and lure them into traps. The idea is to keep on the move, setting mines and turrets to slow them down and take out health bit by bit, showing them that you mean business. Then, anytime your pulse cannon is off cooldown, try your best to get some distance, pre-charge, and get a clean shot off, doing considerable damage. Then get your butt moving again and repeat that process. Eventually you will either kill them, they will back off, or someone's team will come to help and you just have to pray that it's yours. To summarize for you, running head on into battle, engaging with enemies directly, poorly placing your traps or turrets, using the DH-17 and not making the most of your orbital strike are all things that make you suck. Sitting back at a distance, setting traps, strategically positioning your turret, using the pulse cannon as much as possible, and effectively using your orbital strike are all things that will make you not suck. Then of course, learning to read the map and aim well will help you drastically with that not sucking part. Thank you guys for watching, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, or even donate, all these actions are greatly appreciated and help otaku a lot. Lots more great videos to come, so check back soon, but until then, as always, may the otaku be with you.